bunch of high impact things. I mean, the question I guess you have to ask yourself is this, is a deck like this, white, black, red, and barrel rights deck, better than a Jun deck, which is basically just another good card deck? But has Thrag, Tusk, and Farseek? Yeah. Right. You know, that's, that's the question you have to ask yourself. Don't know the answer to that question, but I think there are merits for playing each deck. Yes. As we cut into our next match here, we have Joel Sorrowin playing Bant Surge on your left. Primal Surge? There are two copies of that here. Among a lot of other things, Ryan Rickler on your right, Ryan Rickler, excuse me, on your right playing Blue Red Flash. What is much more traditional path deck? Game. Descendants Path is a card we'll bring up on the screen so we don't have to guess. Okay. Because I know it has a lot of text, and I can't remember what it does, but the other <laughs> cards that are in his deck, we'll, go, we'll do a brief rundown for you guys. Thrag Tusk, uh, Gyre Sage, Arbor Elf, Elvish Visionary, Master Biromancer, Elvish Archer, two copies of Rock's Faithbender, one Collective Blessing, two Akrimo's Memorial, one Garrick Primal Hunter, two Primal Surge, and four of the card on the screen, Descendants Path, which is a lithograph that we do have for sale over at StarCityGames.com, drawn by our feature artist at Grand Prix Charlotte, Therese Nielsen. She's awesome. And there it is in all its glory, my friend, and what it does. I'm still reading it. Hold on. Text. A lot of it. Yeah. All right. So it does some stuff. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, it does things, stuff and things, guys. <laughs> Uh, on the other side, we have uh, Blue, White, Red with Assemble the Legion. Starting? Yes, sir. 2X. All right. He's got the Blasphemous Act and the Harvest Pyre. And two is it Charms. Interesting choice. So more of the uh, Darren Menard school of thought here of starting Assemble the Legion. Get a leg up in the mirror, maybe other places as well. As we do join this game three in progress, you see Joel is going to play a breeding pool. You see his hand, he has an Elvis Visionary, he also has an Akrimo's Memorial in his hand as well. Look at all those dudes! He's gonna be adding a bunch of mana now. He has so many permanents right now. And that is an Akrimo's Memorial. I can't imagine that's that, Yeah, I can't imagine that's resolving <laughs> either. So if that does, this game is over. Yeah. So Akrimo's Memorial gets negated immediately. And now we're going to see some mana here. And Elvish Visionary. Gets the thumbs up, draws Joel, another Gyre Sage. Hmm. Hmm. And he looks like he's just going to hang back on defense. As we're going to see a Thought Scour here from Ryan. He's going to turn over two cards and draw a new one. He's going to keep the secret from us, though. Yeah, no one's allowed to know what those cards are. <laughs> As Ryan draws, looks like another Boros Reckoner. So he looks pretty flush with spells, but kind of short on mana. Um, really is going to need a Wrath effect this game, I feel. And it looks like he only has one Blasphemous Act main and one in the board. Oh, he also has two Supreme Verdicts. So well, he goes a, up to four. He's ahead in life total right now, however. You know, it, obviously Joel has more things that are in play, but Ryan's at 18 and Joel's at 11. And he's about to be hit by in. seven. Yeah, about to be hit with seven more plus whatever Reckoner deals. Of course, you know. This is, this is getting to the point where, uh, like, Harvest Pyre is lethal. Yeah. On, on your own Boros Reckoner. And we see guys in St. Traff that can just run right face front into that Thrag Tusk to you know, get four points of damage across, and then the Reckoner can you know cause a little bit of havoc here if he chumps blocks it. He can move the one upstairs to Joel's head. He can move the one to the other Reckoner, maybe the Arbor Elf, what have you. Definitely has some decisions to make, but it looks like Joel's going to be at least moving down to seven this turn. Yeah. Which is enough that the Reckoner would indeed be lethal. The question is, does he have that Harvest Pyre in his hand? As if he does, this game will be over immediately. Ooh, there's also, um... Is that, uh, Arch Druid? Which means there that it's actually play, a 2-2 yeah, so. Visionary, so... A little more damage. I mean, now we're talking getting to 5, and that's, like, two Searing Spears. That's a, that's a Searing Spear and a Pillar. Yeah. That's easy. And it looks like Ryan does have a lot of cards in his hand, too. So it looks like damage is going to resolve. He puts the damage from Reckoner right upstairs. Yeah. Oh, Reckoner's still alive. Yeah, there I don't think go. that one's going anywhere. Okay. So looks like Joel, as long as our light tools are correct, is going to move down to five ball. Five. Oh, a little life discrepancy. Okay. The difference between five and like six or seven is pretty big. Yeah. Well, the difference between five and six is pretty big, and the difference between six and seven is huge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but 
But it's only a number. Yeah. I don't understand. How could one be more important than the next? It doesn't make any sense to me. Mm -hmm. Maybe when you're older, son. See Ryan. That's, a pretty, that's pretty good hair. Ryan looks a little bit disappointed, maybe? What's going on here? It seems to me if I'm wrong, I'm probably pretty happy with what's going on here, but I could I, be wrong. Yeah, that is not... That, is, that doesn't look of disgust, if anything. Doesn't, that doesn't look like a poker face to me, no. either. You know, this is a, I sort of bluff. How sick would it be if he's just slow rolling? He's just like, ah, harvest fire. <laughs> I guess spear pillar you. Yeah. No, right. I mean he's he's missing land drops and he's uh he's gonna have to sequence his spells very carefully if he's gonna want to survive. I mean Joel definitely has you know a nice uh, board presence, a nice there. board presence yeah. over there for sure. And counting up the damage here: five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I mean this looks like thirteen damage he has present on the board. Doesn't look like it's gonna be a lethal attack, but Ryan is just going to pass the turn back. So he draws. So what are you looking to do here? You see a Temple Garden, you see a Gyre Sage, and you see a Mystery Card over there. He does have some big splashy cards he can play, like that Chromus Memorial that we saw last turn. But he does, doesn't look like he has another one of those in his hand. He's going to play Temple Garden untapped, so he's going to go to three. Wow, that is bold. And here it is. And Without he, even getting past yeah, priority. He can't, yeah, he hasn't even passed priority. Without and, even getting yeah, past priority. He could not Boros Charm fast <laughs> enough. <laughs> Woo! So Ryan Rickler said, whatever thing you are going to cast or if you move to the next phase of the game,